Today, we revisit one of the most unusual hotels that has ever appeared on Gordon Ramsay's Hotel Hell. In fact, it was more than just a hotel, as the owner used it as a dance club for his hippie friends, complete with dancing mushrooms. This is the legendary Applegate River Lodge episode, a hotel Gordon visited in mid-2013 in the second season of Hotel Hell. And wait until you meet the owner, Richard, aka Paw Butt. Was this one place that Gordon Ramsay was able to save? Did the renovations hold up? Or did it ultimately go back to being an ideal destination for hippies? So chill, relax, and get ready for the episode recap, followed by a look at where they are today, and how the hotel did after the episode originally aired. At the beginning of this adventure, we travel to the beautiful community of Applegate, Oregon, a place of natural beauty that never ceases to amaze. Surrounded by rivers, vineyards, and spectacular landscapes, Applegate is a paradise destination for any tourist. Despite all those advantages, things are not going well for Richard and Joanna Davis, the couple who built the Applegate River Lodge themselves more than 22 years ago. During that time, things have got a little complicated. Richard decided to take a break from officially operating the hotel and divorce Joanna. Now, he's an old man known as Paw Butt, who spends his days cultivating his green thumb and enjoying the view. Meanwhile, his ex-wife Joanna struggles to keep the lodge open as they are losing up to $15,000 a month. I don't see the Applegate River Lodge as a business. Never have, never will. Cool story, bro. I think Ramsey better save himself the trip to this place. After all, it looks more like a hippie commune rather than a hotel. Despite her ex's attitude, Joanna trusts her sons, Duke and Dusty, to keep the business running. The problem is that the brothers don't get along. So Dusty takes over the hotel's restaurant and bar, while Duke... Too much of this and too much of that, too much... Let's just say Duke inherited a lot from his father. Maybe too much. Even though the hotel hardly receives any guests, Richard and Duke are having a great time organizing musical events. As a result, Joanna sees Ramsey as her last hope. When he arrives at the lodge, Gordon is amazed by the beauty. Although it doesn't take long for him to catch a strange smell coming from Richard's hut. Could it be a skunk gut in there? Upon entering the hotel, Ramsey finds it empty with no one there to greet him except a button to call the manager. While well, the manager is too busy smoking and playing his guitar, the good life. Finally, Richard bothers to attend to Ramsey, inviting him into his hut and to smell some of his medicinal herbs. Is this cannabis? Yes. For a moment, Richard turned into a teenager, attempting to explain the situation to his father. After that awkward exchange, Ramsey gets to know his room, one exclusively for cattlemen, complete with authentic cattle stench. He also finds strange stains of indeterminate origins on the carpet. Richard explains that they tend to have a lot of parties in the rooms. Oh look, they also invite Mr. Insect to their parties. How considerate. If the filth wasn't enough, the room decor is also pretty old. However, Richard doesn't care about that and mentions that he doesn't see the lodge as a business. Kids, don't do drugs. You'll end up like that. Looking for someone with common sense, Ramsey introduces himself to Joanna, who tells him that she takes care of everything, but that's not enough to pay off the lodge's massive million dollars worth of debt. What's worse is that her sons won't share their earnings to help her with the debt. Ramsey then tries to have a conversation with Duke though it doesn't accomplish much because the guy is as high as a kite. Ramsey tries his luck with Dusty, who pulls in about $12,000 a month at the restaurant, but refuses to give a cut to his mother. I'd give you a kick with the ass if that was my son. Beyond that, the lodge and its restaurant welcome many guests, thanks to Gordon's presence. Now I feel bad for those people because all they get in return is terrible food and dirty rooms. After a disappointing night's service from the restaurant, Ramsey wonders how they make money with such poor performance. He doesn't hesitate to make it clear to Dusty that without his mother, he wouldn't have any business to his name. That was the end of a tough day for Gordon, who goes to go wind down for the evening. But wait, Richard and Duke's guest band is just warming up, about to start playing. Gordon expected to encounter a moderately normal party, although there were a lot of hippies and people in costume. <laughs> Yes, they're very weird people, but at least they're nice. I think this is the first time I've seen Gordon give so many hugs. 
In the midst of that chaos, Joanna tries to attend to the few guests who actually want to stay at the hotel. As other guests were complaining about the sound, Joanna has no choice but to give them free rooms for the night. After midnight, the band finally leaves and Gordon can get some rest. Or so he thought. Because when he illuminates his room with the black light, he finds bodily fluids on the pillow, the mattress, the walls, and even the lampshade. For those kinds of surprises, Ramsey always has a sleeping bag. Thinking he can finally get some sleep, he then finds out there is an after party in Richard's hut, the Butt Hut. Tired of the noise, Ramsey calls the Davis family to point out that they won't make a profit if they have this many parties. Nobody says we were sensible people. Oh, we're just blessed people. Blessed with a million dollars of debt. Instead of accepting the criticism, Richard starts to get all pissy, reminding Gordon that the lodge is a home and not a hotel. Of course, he ignored the part about his children taking advantage of their mother's kindness. Since trying to reason with Richard at this point is pointless, Gordon turns to Duke and Dusty, calling them out for arguing with each other while their mother struggles to keep the business open. The next day, Ramsey calls a few guests to tell Joanna about their experience at the hotel. As you can probably guess, their opinions are not good at all. One couple had to wash their own bathroom, while others found dirty underwear on their bed. Guests initially approached Richard, but instead of fixing the problems, he took them to his hut to offer them a little smoky smoky instead. Embarrassed by those comments, Joanna meets privately with Gordon to show him an album showcasing the original construction of the lodge. However, it is clear that the current state of the lodge is pretty horrible, nothing like when it was originally opened. That's why it's such an important place to Joanna. It represents the best side of her family. Recognizing that, Ramsey tries to get the brothers to work out their differences, but it's a bit complicated. I'm ashamed that you're my brother. Despite their mother crying in front of them, the brothers continue to insult each other like it's nothing. Finally, Gordon intervenes in the conversation, agreeing to a truce between the brothers for their mother's sake. Now it's time to negotiate with Richard, but Ramsey simply asks him to stay out of the business so his sons can take over. Of course, Richard was extremely resistant to that idea. To seal their reconciliation, Dusty and Duke give each other a hug in front of their mother. Ah, I'll never get tired of watching Gordon fix families. After that, we move on to the renovations of the lodge, which change from a large and empty space to a tastefully decorated one with a cozy atmosphere. As part of the changes, Ramsey introduces them to a digital system to manage the hotel, the restaurant, and even the musical events. As for the horrible cattle room, Gordon's team updated it quite a bit, and best of all, they cleaned up the stains. On the other hand, the restaurant will have a new, smaller menu, focusing on a few delicious but simple dishes. But that's not where the changes end, because Ramsey surprises them in the courtyard with several tents and a stage for musical shows. Richard, you will not believe what I've done with your butt hut. You ready? Don't worry, it was just a joke. Ramsey's team didn't dare touch anything in there. The hotel relaunch ends in total success, with Dusty and his wife handling the food, while Duke handles the entertainment alongside his wife. Seeing that his work is done, Ramsey bids farewell to the Davis family, reminding Dusty and Duke that they must continue to work together for their mother's sake. Initially, after Ramsey's visit, the Applegate River Lodge thrived thanks to its efforts of the Davis brothers, who began to help pay off the hotel's debt. But did that good family atmosphere last in the long term? Or was it just a show for the cameras? What happened to the Applegate River Lodge after Hotel Hell? Before its appearance on Hotel Hell, the lodge had terrible reviews, mostly due to noise complaints from the music and dance parties they hosted. After the show, the reviews got much better, praising the excellent service, the quality of the food, and Dusty's effort. The hotel enjoyed a prosperous few years, achieving 3.2 stars on Yelp, while its restaurant got 3.5 stars on TripAdvisor. Generally, Yelp is about food and TripAdvisor is about hotels, but there are always exceptions. In addition, Duke took the time to personally respond to the reviews left online, as seen here, for example. One of the reasons for the hotel's growth was its wedding events program, which has been very successful from the looks of it. Not all guests indeed left satisfied, though with some finding actual weed nugs in their bedding, along with complaints about dirty rooms with soiled sheets. 
I guess some things never change. But look at Sugar Bob, Richard's pet deer. Isn't he adorable? But enough for reviews. It's time to take a closer look at the hotel. Fortunately, YouTuber Brennan Taylor stayed there in mid-2022 and shared his experience to the world. Of course, he and his brother stayed in the cattleman room, which looked nice. Also, there's a little note from the hotel management to remind their guests that they always keep their rooms clean. However, as the day progresses, Brennan and his brother discover several disgusting things, such as an insect shell, stains in the toilet, and black mold in the corners. There is also a small cameo by Mr. Spider. Later, they had the honor of meeting Richard, who is just as cool as he is in the episode. If you're wondering about his nose patch, he unfortunately contracted skin cancer, although that hasn't affected his good humor. In the interview, Richard admits that some of the show was slightly exaggerated, such as the fact that Joanna was struggling to make money. Yet the whole confrontation of their sons was real. In fact, that was the main reason they called Gordon in, to heal their boy's relationship. Also, in the episode, almost 10 years prior, Ramsey made him swear to never invite people to smoke in his hut again. Well, that's exactly what Richard did with Brennan and his brother. Richard may be 75 years old, but he still smokes like he's 15. In conversation, the old man reveals that he was married to Joanna for 30 years. On the other hand, his son Dusty left the hotel for personal reasons. Among some of his secret talents, Richard plays a song he composed himself. This man is full of surprises. As for the food, Brennan and his brother ordered a couple of sandwiches that were pretty good, but they mostly didn't stop talking about their experience with Richard. At that point, they also met a chef who has been working the hotel restaurant for 20 years, and he is just as nice as Richard. Even though the room was not the best, Brennan and his brother had an incredible experience, especially with the staff. I highly recommend you watch his two videos to see the entire hotel and hear Richard's amazing stories. Nevertheless, all things must come to an end. Richard and Joanna decided to sell the hotel they built themselves in December of 2022 to enjoy their retirement, along with such hobbies as traveling. The new owners are Anna and Mike Eastman, a couple from the Rogue Valley who renamed the hotel The Lindsay in honor of Lindsay Applegate, a pioneer of the Applegate Trail. We can also rest assured that the hotel still retains its essence. Currently, The Lindsay enjoys 9.3 stars on Booking.com although it still has only a few reviews as it only changed hands recently. As for the Davis brothers, it appears that Dusty has no social media, but Duke has a Facebook profile. He still enjoys music and recently had a son. I couldn't find much information on Richard and Joanna, although I assume they are out there enjoying their retirement. Wherever they are, I hope they are doing well.